Hello and welcome friends, my name is Hutner, and this is my channel, and we are playing Distant Worlds 2. Yes, the last game went very, very, very badly, very fast, because I made it too difficult. It was fun, it was exciting, and it's over. Now we're going to make it more difficult in a reasonable way. We're not going all crazy, we're just gonna go straight in and play this in a way that makes some kind of sense. Okay. <laughs> so just start game. First of all, we're gonna play with... A strong civilization that I don't usually play with. None of these things need to change. These are pretty standard for me. Uh, they, they have made it so that it works better at endgame with larger... Could go back... No. This is good. This is good. So, we're going to put it there. We're going to have a little tech advantage. No. We're giving them no tech advantage. We are going to leave it on chaos, though, at extreme difficulty. Research speed normal. This stuff is all fine. No tech trading. Pirates are going to be many. Pirates are going to be strong. We're going to leave this the same. Are we, though? Why don't we do many and normal? Why don't we do strong and normal? I think this is good. Space creatures we're going to put back to many because I like to have lots of them and I turned it down because this was turned up. Colonization, normal. Independent colonies, rare. Colony influence, slightly larger. Colony range limits, slightly larger. And we are going to play someone we haven't done yet. I was tempted to redo uh, my very, 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 very favorite of my very, very, very favorite races, which is the Xenox. But instead, we're going to do a race that I like a lot, but haven't played yet on the channel, and that is Akdarian. Um, I'm going to continue to try to make this a more militaristic mixed game. So, I think the Akdarian can do that pretty well. Uh, they're very technologically advanced. Let's go to next. I'm going to play them as a technocracy... Oh, what flag are we going to pick here? Obvious. So does the purple ones, though. Then we go too far, we're starting to look too much like a Xenox. I think this is good. We're going to take this one. We're going to spend all day worrying about this. So we start with planetary scanners and planetary exploration. Those are great technologies that I love to have early on, but I almost never find room to do them right away. So having them will be a real help. And I'll have our home system be normal. Uh, our expansion is going to be starting. Our tech level will be the same as everyone else. And we're going to let them randomize where we are. Actually, we're going to try to get far regions. Put ourselves on the edge. Okay, let them generate all of our... All of our space friends, randomly. And none of this needs to change. I don't want to turn these off. Using the low victory threshold so the game will be relatively short. And we're just going to get started. <laughs> yes! I am glad to be playing this game again. I didn't do much playing of anything last week after the loss. And then, you know, I had a... I had a different game weekend for something that uh, I don't have any way to cover on this channel because it's not appropriate for it. Yes! And now that weekend is over and we're back and playing this game, let's get started. I play this, it feels like, every time they upgrade, it feels like that, that's, that, that zoom in works a little bit better. So we are really Galaxy Edge here. This area over here, you can see this sort of spiral is sort of coming apart. Up here with all these little clusters of nebulae. And we're going to do our usual start. Nothing really different. We're not going to go for a, you know, having said those words, I regret them immediately. Because I think we are going to go for something a little different. We need to hit up early warp field right away. Then after early warp field, I mean we're Actarians, we can't really not do the la research lab, right? Right, we can't, we can't skip that. So I guess next we'll do the research lab. Then normally after that, I do shields. There we go. And then we do the next drive. And then after that, I think we're going to do a bit military. Military, military militaristic let's see what we got so we started with early torpedo weapons i think this game maybe we're gonna focus on 
I'm going to actually take a second here and look at the torpedo weapons and get an idea of of what our good later torpedoes are going to look like, like our mid-game, late-game torpedoes. So they have no shield bypass, lots of armor bypass. That seems to be pretty consistent. So we need something with shield destructivity. What destroys shields well? I think beams are the same. I think that they are... But yeah, armor bypass on the higher beams here. It's armor bypass. And then if we go to the top, it's all armor bypass. So we want something... Pulse weapons do? Nothing on the lower level ones, but that's not expected once we start to get up here. Still not seeing anything. They're very balanced. The pulse weapons seem to be balanced. I've looked at all these things before, but I don't remember them from game to game. It's a thing that happens. So the phasers are shield bypass. Pulse weapons are very even. Like, they're even up until the very end, and then... Then we continue to have these ones up here, which are still, as far as I can tell, even. Yep, and then you also have the phaser option. Which is shield bypass. I think that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna do pulse weapons. As our main, uh... They want us to use bead weapons, but bead weapons are, are redundant with what we're already doing. So we're gonna do pulse weapons. If we get up here before the game ends, we'll try to get phasers. We should be able to do that. That should be easy. We're going to fill in a lot more of our technology than we did in the human game. If we play well. At the usual start, there is no reason to avoid. Just going into here and grabbing our one... Oh, you need to be paused, my friend. So we've got our two free techs. You... I'm just going to send you immediately to explore that guy. Unpause and let things start to happen. We're going to start fast, but we're going to try to keep things under control. You want me to build a small spaceport? Yeah, we'll build that right away. No reason to put that off. I probably should have looked at it. Everything's going fine. We're, we're not profitable. We're already spending too much money. Not my favorite. But I think that might be... Just because they've allocated... Nope. They've allocated no reserves. Ship maintenance. Yeah, we just have too much ship maintenance for our current economic state. Hopefully we can find some stuff that will help with that soon. Okay, we want to put in this research station. And we want to grab... The resources there. And this part of the game is the same every single time. We're gonna go into here. We're going to crash our early warp field just so that it can't accidentally critical and screw us over. And then we're gonna let our little uh, Darian friends have their have their little space exploration party. Give them a little time to themselves. So we need to start finding luxuries because we need... What you doing? Are you done? You're done. Retrofit, please. See, don't retrofit. Could you uh, survey here? That'll bring you in and then we'll retrofit once this is done. We need to find luxuries as quickly as possible. We need to do fast exploration. Uh, we need to do much faster exploration than last time. But just like last time, we need to ex also expend a lot of resources early on on a fleet capable of destroying pirates. Okay, so this is our beautiful, cute little Akdarian Explorer. We have called it the Intrepid, the DSE-1. That is for Deep Space Explorer. Over here, we have taken its weapons off, because weapons on exploration ships is dumb. And everything else is balanced. We got the good upgrades here, and we got our skip drive. Energy is imbalanced. And we are ready to go, so we're just going to save an exit on that. Let's look at our mining station. We have fit two extra small mining engines on here, taken off the, the beams and just left the plasma torpedoes to make weapon room, removed a docking bay as well. We could put that back on, but we're not going to, because we need room for shields. 
uh, once we balance for shields, we'll see if we have anything else up here. Hopefully we get the hull, when we get the hull upgrade to this, we can probably put its, uh, second docking bay back on. Honestly, I don't think that they get enough traffic to need two docking bays. Hopefully this doesn't, uh, hopefully this doesn't bottleneck our early economy, but I, I doubt that it will. It never has that I've ever seen before. The next thing is our research station. Let's just upgrade that. We haven't changed much in here. We leave the research bay station's weapons on, of course, because it isn't a ship. It's got a docking bay. It's got everything else it needs. Basic amenities. We took off the stuff that doesn't matter. Eh, it's a... I don't think it... That's okay. Is that okay? No, that can't be okay, right? Gotta give it another reactor. It's got the room for it. There we go. Gonna save and exit on that. And our small spaceport. We have upgraded. Everything is in balance. It has a proper amount of cr crew. We have two construction yards, which is the most important thing to put on it. And all our weapons have been trimmed down to the minimum. These things aren't strong enough to defend systems on their own anyway, so there's no point. Additionally, uh, they could just be flown around. It's one of the problems that, that this game's, like, way of dimensioning things works, is that, uh, you don't get to choose where these are on the planet, and your enemies will just fly in on the side they're not on, and they won't get any shots in. I mean, they're not smart enough to always do that, but they do do it quite a lot. Alright, so warp drive is finished, and we are now at the place where everything has changed. You are going to immediately retrofit, my friend. And we are going to immediately go to here and waste money we don't have. It's not a waste. It's, it, this is absolutely necessary. We are going to build two more construction ships and two more exploration ships. And that is literally all our money. I'm hoping that... that I mean, I'm, I say I hope as if it doesn't happen every single game. But what should happen... Oh, I did not actually purchase those. I clicked them without clicking the purchase button. I can tell because I have money left. So, what was I saying? Yeah, this will go up because they're going to build some uh, civilian ships. But this number needs to go up so that our science is sufficient. Until this number goes up, our science is no good. So just look at one. You are being retrofitted right now. Oh, yeah. Look at you parking. Good job, friend. You get in there so we can get underway. The sooner you get in there, the sooner you get out. The sooner you get out, the sooner we get underway. We have our first hyper jump. Who was that? Slippery pathway. Who's the slippery pathway? And where did he jump to? But I know it wasn't the lone boot. Oh, lone bootlegger. I thought it was the lone bootlegger. It's gonna be what a what a name. I don't feel right. <laughs> there he is. He is now an intrepid DS1 doing his work out here checking out this system. Good job, friend. Good job. Oh, there's an abandoned base out there. Uh, can you... Our first luxury, we absolutely need that. So we're not even going to hesitate on picking that up. We also need to get this fuel. Big deal. I will scrap everything. There's no point in pretending we don't want everything. Our first research base out there doing work too. Still not making money, but we should find some luxuries in our starting system that'll help out with that. Right now, we're hoping for a money boost from something, <laughs> so we can defend against the first pirates. There's still some time away before we can do that anyway. More luxuries. That's good. I don't need all of these. In fact, we could try to be efficient with these. For example, this one is not necessary because it's going to be close enough to this one, I think. Just to get them well spread out, but not building all of them. Because they will mine for multiple asteroids if they're in range. Yeah, our local area is looking pretty nice, like I said. We got, we got the edge of the universe up here. The edge of the universe. The edge of the galaxy up here. The vastness of intergalactic space. I think pretty well, actually, for the resources in our starting system. Which is... Good, because that'll help us out a lot. And we want to just put these new ones in. Should all be good as a start. We still have early deflectors ahead of us and our research labs getting done. Hopefully we can get these research labs done pretty fast, but it should be okay. 
as the luxuries start going in, we should start becoming more profitable, and that should mean that we get more of our science output actually covered. We are starting to cover our expenses, but we really need to bring resources in, because luxuries are the only way for our colony to get more developed before we have money. Which means we need more luxuries all the time, more luxuries. This focus on the first system part is always one of the most interesting parts of the game to me. It has the most detailed um, focus on determining how well your uh, your civilization is going to do your space empire. A good starting system will make the beginning of the game really easy, and a bad starting system won't. And a lot of that is dependent on how many luxuries you can pump in to your starting planet. So, not unexpectedly, this is not suitable for us, but that's... Like I said, that's not unexpected. Minus three for Actarians, that's... It's a little bad. It has... It has... Ruins on it. Maybe we'll find somebody later who can do that for us, or... I mean, it is only minus three, so with all of the planets and everything else, we sh could eventually do it. We have discovered... Yeah, okay. Let's investigate. Oh, 50,000 credits. That event just built us a fleet. Ha, thank you. Thank you very much, event. Thank you for building us a fleet. Shields? We'll probably crash shields. We got lots of luxuries in this system. That's... It's actually a really strong start to have lots of luxuries in the system. So that it can't critical to guarantee that it gets out. Those, uh, shields getting out fast is going to be essential to our ability to defend our fleets. And our system. Hopefully we are not fighting like four pirates at the same time this time. It is still possible that even though I turned it back down to normal, we could get a bad pirate randomization and still fight like four or five at the beginning. At least all of our neighbors won't be so far ahead of us like they were last time that we're utterly destroyed. And we won't be playing against type for civilization, so we won't be struggling to do well in general. We're managing these more closely, you may notice, than I have in previous games. Not required for me to do this, but it can be good. More unknown items discovered. One of the big advantages of starting as a technocracy now is having those deep scanners for your very first system scans get you access to a lot more of the resources in your system, and that is a huge advantage. An advantage that we are definitely taking 100% taking advantage of. What a wonderful sentence, advantage of. That is a pair of technologies that we are taking 100% advantage of. Very useful. Overstate how useful it is to have those scanners when you do your first system scan. There we go. So we have... We didn't need to come in here for this. We need to go up here, go to ship designs, go to our escorts, go to upgrade, and then we need to look at our starting escorts. So it's two weapons, two shields, it's pretty normal. Lots of engines. That's interesting. That, that's very interesting. How, how fast can you go? You're like the opposite. Jeez, you can take four. Okay, let's think about these ships for a moment. So they've created what they think is a viable design with these weapons. It's a 7.1 strength. First of all, we need a shield generator. It's non-negotiable. We could remove a fuel tank to get it. Still, it's not enough. Which means we're going to have to figure out what else to move. We could take off the proximity sensor arrays. They're kind of useful on early ships. It's not space I'm lacking, it's crew. <laughs> so we took a fuel cell off and put a crew, crew position in instead, and we're perfectly fine. We're actually... perfectly fine. I could put a second deflector... Oh, I took this off. I don't want to take this off if I don't have to. Yeah, that's good. We're perfectly fine. I thought that the crew capacity was the hull number being red. I was very wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong. Or, yeah, we're, we're a little hyperdrive limited, but do I ever want to take another fuel cell off? I don't think I can fit a hyperdrive. Another uh, reactor. Reactors are kind of weighty, aren't they? Yeah, they are. No, I think we're just going to accept the fact that we're running a little slow to start. So what are we going to call these? I think we're going to call these needles, and we're going to call it HDE, Home Defense Escort. 
because these are not really going to be used for assaults <laughs> on other nations. We will build ships for that like we would in a regular game as soon as, uh, as, soon as the, it's required for us to make them. So we're going to do that, and now that we have these ships, we're going to throw ourselves back into debt by immediately building a fleet. We're going to call this fleet Add New. We're going to call it Home Defense Fleet. And we're going to put in it... Do we really want 12? No, 10 is fine. 10 is always the starting number I use, and 10 is fine. We're good. We are going to immediately build one of those at the spaceport. It's going to throw us into debt, but we have the money for it because we got that lucky uh, ruins search, which may not have been lucky, it may have been because of how deep our scanners are. Those scanners are a huge, huge benefit. Technocracy has a huge benefit now. I, I keep saying it, but it's super important. Those scanners make a big difference. The, we are getting deeper into the items that are found on our ships, on our, our planets, than we would with the regular sensors. And because of that, we are producing much, much, much better income. And we don't have to spend time rushing to that. Now, lots of other people get lots of other things that are good. But these two, they are very important to your snowball. In fact, probably so important that I should be focusing on getting them sooner in other games. The fact I don't is just that there's always feels like there's so much to do with tech. You know, it always feels like I got so much to do. Right now, though, I feel like we're in a pretty strong position. I'm going to push us to the end of the first pirate alert, which means probably right after we jump out of system. Okay, so we are getting close to where we need to be. I'm going to start building a second fleet now. Just to get that fleet done as quickly as possible. Home defense fleet, build it. Build it at the spaceport. That's going to that's going to crash our money, but it's fine. We need we need the stuff done. Get these things done. Once this is finished, is probably we're going to meet our pirate when we're going to meet our pirates. Hopefully things go well. I don't know. Our, our fleets are not that strong. But if I can get two of them built, I should be able to hopefully overwhelm early pirate ships. It's going to be tough, though. It's going to be really tough. Like, I don't want to... <laughs> I want to get too excited about how well we're going to do because it's going to be really, really tough. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Our second fleet needs to get hot keyed. Our first fleet is already being commanded by the Admiral that I assigned to them, which is good. <laughs> We're falling a little under. Uh, we need this all to happen. Come on, guys, you can do it. Once we make that first jump out of system, it's going to almost automatically beat the pirates dead. That's not what triggers the pirates. There's no trigger to the pirates. That's just has how it feels. But... When you leave your system, you're, like, much more likely to be seen because you appear bigger, right? You're doing more things. When you jump to another system, when you jump out of your system, when you develop your whole system, all these things are more noticeable by the scanners of the pirates. And then the pirates will eventually scan you and realize that you're a worthy target, and that's when they'll attack you. The question is, and it's an important question, Do we defend our space stations at the beginning, or do we let them attack our space stations and defend our planet? Uh, we need the resources from our space stations if our planet's ever going to become really good. That's just the truth. But, <laughs> at the same time, we need to defend our planet if we're going to keep playing the game. These are going to be strong pirates. They're probably going to have some ships that are... Like, individual ships that are almost as strong as a whole fleet. And that can be very problematic, because we can get killed super, super fast. 
super fast that way. Like, a whole fleet can be wiped out by a couple of pirate ships if... Well, if the fleet isn't in great shape. If it's not... fully ready. You know? And the other thing is... Gotta pause that. And then we need to immediately go to ship designs, and we need to go to our intrepids, and we need to upgrade them and save it. And the second we do that, they will begin the process of retrofitting. And it's very likely that we will get pirates right after they retrofit. Oh, this fleet. I wish it was done. <laughs> I wish it was finished. Two fleets would make me feel a lot more confident than one feet. fleet does. Those pirates are going to attack literally any second. I know it. I know it. I know it. This. There they are. I told you. Dismiss this. Close it. Wince hard. It's showing them as there. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send both fleets. Because even though the second fleet isn't finished. Even though the second fleet isn't finished, how strong is this ship? Oh god, the ship is as strong as a fleet. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We can do this, guys. We can do this. I have no confidence that we can do this. I have confidence that we're going to try. And I guess they gotta... Don't prepare, just come. <laughs> okay... So we're here... Fleet 1, here, with Fleet 2 in support. This is a strong ship. Oh, we've taken damage, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Their other fleet is here. Their other ship is here. Much, much better, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> oh, it feels so different having real combat ships. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, every pirate isn't just like taking what they want and fleeing before we can destroy them. They're actually dying. Let's look at the pirates and see what their strength is. Their strength is still pretty strong, but that's not unexpected. And you and repair yourself, and then in here we also want to pick out the ones that need to repair themselves. Ship cannot move. That guy, that's actually a disabled ship. <laughs> Not me misreading it because I was trying to upgrade it, but actually a disabled ship. Okay. <laughs> this poor guy. But they come back to attack us again, that guy's getting wrecked. We will not be able to save you, my friend. No! Oh, you saved yourself! You got underway! <laughs> Good job! Okay, I said I was gonna end this episode after we had our first pirate attack, and I don't think we could possibly have had a more successful pirate attack than that. That was pretty good, I think, for a starting execution. Uh, we are in good shape, but not excellent shape. We're about to change our weapons over to pulse weapons. Pulse weapons and torpedoes combined together, which I think is gonna be good. We got a bit of a militaristic cue, I think... I think we're going to finish this by going like this. We're going to hit up... Where is it? There's defenses. Coming down here to defenses... Oh, that's weird. For some reason I thought those would be together, but they aren't. We're going to grab armor plating. 
Then after armor plating, or maybe before armor plating, I guess. I don't know which one. Early weapon, uh, early torpedo weapons we'll get. And then we will get our pulse weapons right there. And that's good. That's good for a cue, and we're going to end this episode here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I feel like we're going to do much better this time because we aren't playing against type and with stronger enemies. And in a merciless galaxy, the galaxy is still merciless. The pirates are still strong, but there's less of them, and we're actually playing a proper empire properly instead of a proper empire improperly. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving it a like or a comment. It really helps me out. It encourages me to keep going and uh, make these videos for everybody out there. If you've been here before and enjoyed the channel in the past, you watched more than one of my videos, please consider giving me a sub. It really helps me. And like everything else, it encourages me. But I am happy, happy for everybody who watches the videos, even for the ones who don't comment and like. You're all welcome. And uh, I hope to see you the next time we're here with our Akdarians. I'm hoping to pace up the speed of this series I've got. The plan is to do an episode every other day. So we'll see. So we'll see. Much faster, I think. And I'll see you when that next episode pops. Goodbye for now.